What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Zoids Battle Legends. After that embarrassing display of Darkhorn awesomeness, we're now going to go back to using the Imperial Liger Zero, and we won an Elephanter from that and some other weapons. <clears throat> I believe the weapon pack C is something else for the uh, Iron Kong if you were using it, but we weren't. I tried using the Iron Kong in the same way that I tried using the Darkhorn here, but the Iron Kong is just too immobile, and the uh, Darkhorn really benefits from the uh, weapons better because of its mobility. So we're going to switch back over to the Liger Zero and give it all of its weapons back. Let's see, we have quite a bit of other weapons, including the uh, little Grand Cannon there. Those two red guns are from the uh, Red Horn, and they could, they, uh, we got them from having the Dark Horn, obviously, because it's the same Zoid and therefore the same weapons. But they start out as uh, red by default. I can imagine the... Uh, that Grand Cannon would be uh, pretty useful with the Liger Zero, but uh, I kind of prefer to use the Long Range Rifle. Uh, I might want to try that out at some point. Okay, this is a uh, this is actually not the mission I thought it was going to be. So we're going to have to. Uh, I'm actually not going to use the uh, Liger Zero for this at all. Actually, <laughs> I'm actually going to switch over to the Lightning Sykes again, and this is probably going to be the last time we're going to use the Lightning Sykes. But I said we use it again, and I tend to uh, live up to that. So we're just going to go ahead and put the boosters back on it. We're going to go ahead and use that. And the reason for this, I'm not even going to bother to equip it with any subparts. The reason for this is just because uh, the objective for this mission is not to actually fight anything. We just have to reach the secret entrance to the base, which is cleverly hidden, and it's cleverly hidden in a way that it's where the crap do I go to find this thing kind of objective. But, uh, I don't remember why I remember this, but we have an ally here. The ally is actually a Blade Liger, which is the first appearance of the Blade Liger in the campaign, which is my favorite Zoid in the entire series. But, uh, we're gonna work our way through this canyon and try to get to where the, uh, that big open area is what looks like a uh, a kidney sort of. I believe it's the same area where uh, we had to go during the mission with the Shadow Fox, or we had to fight the Lightning Sykes actually. So now we're uh, the reason I chose the Lightning Sykes is just because it's the most powerful, not the most powerful, but the fastest sword we have. So we're going to use that to try to get there as fast as possible. We're going to be running into several uh, Hellcats along the way that are uh, they have the camo, the, uh, the invisibility that they had during that one mission in the Republic campaign that made them so annoying but we don't have to worry about them at all we're just gonna go right past them and pretend like they don't exist and we're just gonna follow the arrow now the only way that you could figure out where this is is by looking at the arrow because and literally believing that the arrow is telling you where to go because this is a pretty this would be a, impossible to figure out where to go otherwise because you actually have to uh, go through a wall and like the uh, the disguise for the base is actually a, like a wall texture over the entrance to where uh, we can go through the wall and then we're inside the base so yeah it's, it's pretty stupid but uh, the fact that we have this convenient arrow here is what's telling us that we can actually do that because when we get closer to that area it's going to be pointing at the wall and we're not going to believe it, we're going to believe it's pointing to the other side of the wall and then we need to go around it and continue down that part of the, of the cannon, which is not true. We need to go through the wall. So, trust the arrow. The arrow knows all. The arrow is pointing it directly where you need to go, as silly as it sounds. But uh, coming up here is going to be a flying type Zoid. The only time we get to fight it in the game, it's called the uh, Terramander. And uh, it's one of the only flying type Zoids in the game that uh, actually doesn't get completely butchered. But it, again, it doesn't really fly, it just sort of hovers down. As you can see, I'm nom nom noming on the wall right here, trying to find the, the spot that's just a uh, invisible wall here that we can just walk through. And I'm getting attacked by the Terramander, which has a giant flamethrower that it shoots out, actually. So it's a really unique Zoe, but we don't actually have to fight it at all. It would make an interesting boss battle if we did, so there we go. We just went right through the wall, and now we're inside the secret entrance to the base. So that was a really, really silly objective. And the only reason that I remember it is because it was so silly. Any day now, game. Any day now.
Okay, we got some interesting weapons there. I'm not sure what entirely what they're for, but it's, we're never going to use them, so no big deal. Um, I'm actually going to continue to use the Lightning Sykes for this mission as well, I think, if this is the one I think it is. Yep, it is. Okay, this is another one of those missions that uh, speed is everything, because what we have to do here is, uh, we're, yet again, we're up against the Chimera Dragons, except on the other side of the campaign. And uh, what we have to do here, now that we're inside the base, is weave our way through these corridors. As you can see, uh, it's just one big maze. But uh, you could be, you could go straight through if all the doors were open. But since only some of the doors are open and some of them are closed, we have to go through a very specific pattern of only being able to go down certain hallways in certain orders because only certain doors are open. But we have to get to two Chimera Dragons, and uh, we have to get to the second one fast enough to kill it before the first one respawns. So that's basically the only reason why I chose Lightning Sykes for its incredible speed. And the uh, Chimera Dragons being as uh, frail as usual will be easily dispatched by the Lightning Sykes and its brutally overpowered cannon. And uh, we have an ally in here, the Liger Arrow I believe, which has already dispatched this uh, Chimera Dragon by half I think. So we really don't even have to do that much to it, we just have to uh, finish it off and go after the second one as fast as possible. Now it's not like a ridiculously short amount of time for you to get to the second one before the first one respawns, but like if you're dilly-dallying around then, or if you don't know the path, because that'll probably happen to you the first time you play the mission, you don't know uh, which which way you're supposed to go because you don't know which doors are open and which ones are closed. But luckily I do, so I'm going to go straight to the second one and take it out and hopefully uh, we'll be able to do it in time. Statistically speaking, we should be able to, considering we have the fa like the fastest sword in the game, so... Just gotta wait for that. There, here it is, the open door. It should be, we can already see it on the radar, it should be at the next little intersection there where they, uh, the path changes. There it is. Let's take it down. It's only got 2,500 health and not very much defense. It shall become our prey. You see that? It tried to numb on us. It was not very successful. Now we actually, uh, uh, we, I believe we win a Chimera Dragon in each campaign. No, actually, no, we won the Fuser Dragon and Lord Gale in the last one. So we win, we win the Chimera Dragon in this campaign, but uh, obviously I'm not going to use it. But uh, I'm actually starting to get a little bit curious about it because uh, it looks like it has some pretty good weapons. But as you can see, we just like kill them off left and right, so they're clearly not uh, very good. Anyway, now we are uh, finally going to stop using the Lightning Sykes, and I will finally stop praising it for how amazing it is. See, there we go, we get the Chimera Dragon, and now we got it. We also got a double sniper rifle, which means we can now equip the Liger Zero Empire with its most powerful weapon. This mission, we are up against some Chimera Dragons and Lord Gale, but we have a, uh, we're in the main arena area, and we have a Gojulus as our ally instead of uh, having to go through a giant corridor with Liger Zero X as our ally. So, you know, we can't have everything. But the Gojulus is actually really useful, much more useful than. Uh, the Iron Kong that we had in this same area in the previous campaign. But yeah, all I'm going to do is equip the double sniper rifle, go ahead and save real quick, and then go straight into the mission. I don't need to worry about subparts or anything. I don't think I even unlocked any more. I think I have the best ones I'll ever get. Music for this part is pretty cool, I do have to admit. So here we go, a four-way battle, or a, a proper Zoids battle for once. Proper two-on-two -two battle. Against Lord Gale here, who actually has quite a bit of health in this form. He's got like 4,400 at first. So, uh... But nothing that the dual sniper rifle can't handle with its obscene brokenness. <laughs> Look at my ally there with the Gojulus just walking right over that center uh, raised area. 
And he's come over here to stomp on uh, Lord Gale all uh, Godzilla style. Like I said, he's a pretty good ally because he likes the Gojolus is just so good at close range that uh, the AI just doesn't know what to think about it. And Lord Gale as well. That might be another. It might be another Zord that's actually really good. I don't know. I just don't really like to use it because I just don't like the uh, Fusor Zoids. But I actually, I actually, did the research I did on uh, Zoids the other day showed the uh, when I find the Chimera Dragon on there, it's actually a fusion of three Zoids apparently from what looks at from what I found of it, and then the uh, the model kit is actually made up of three smaller. Uh, Zoids that were in a little sub-series of small Zoids that came out at that time, which I don't really particularly care for the look of, but Chimera Dragon actually looks pretty nice with all three of them connected like that. But I think I prefer the look of him in the game and in the anime because he doesn't have a... he has a little bit more refined and detailed look. And you can't really even tell that he's made up of three Zoids at all. He looks like one, even though he does look a bit silly. Now we just have to kill him, and he this particular one has a lot more health than all the previous ones, which is why there's only one of them and only one Lord Gale. But yeah, we have one of my favorite setups right now, the Liger Zero with the uh, double sniper rifle. And I may actually use this setup a couple times in the uh, in the campaign. It might actually be cheaper to do this, or not the campaign, in the uh, tournament mode, because it may actually be cheaper to buy a Liger Zero than it would be to buy a Koenig Wolf. I'm not sure. And a, despite the double sniper rifle being so good, there's a, there's quite a few other weapons I want to try out with the Liger Zero, such as the uh, weapons from the uh, Dark Horn that I showed earlier. So despite having played this game as many times as I did, <laughs> look, he's doing it again. <laughs> he's just eager to kick some ass. I'll uh, let him have it. Let him do his job. Anyway, there, despite having played this game as many times as I have, there's still a lot of things I haven't done, a lot of things I'd like to try. There we go. Wow, me and my ally are kind of like completely unscratched, and yet we just utterly decimated them. I say we make a pretty good team. So now I believe we're all, we're moving on to the final boss, considering we're in the uh, main arena area here. So obviously we're going to cooperate, and when we cooperate this time, we actually get two allies, which is really cool. We get a uh, the Liger Arrow, and we get the Blade Liger again. So we we win Lord Gale for that one, and so we win Lord Gale in both of them. So we're not gonna, I'm not going to change my setup or anything. I'm just going to go straight into the battle, and it's going to be against the Ultrasaurus. You know, the Ultrasaurus behaves uh, very similarly to the Seismosaurus in that uh, it's the same sort of uh, chassis, it's the same sort of length, and it has a lot of the same weapons, but it does not have a charged particle beam, but it does have uh, two incredibly large shoulder cannons that just use them there, and uh, there's a, those are probably more dangerous than the uh, charged particle beam could be, in fact, because they, uh, they knock you back immediately and they have incredible uh, splash damage and whatnot. But, uh, we have a uh, three ligers against one dinosaur. So what do you think is gonna win? I'm gonna vote for the uh, triple liger delta formation thingy, whatever. I don't, well, I don't have it figured out a name for our team yet, but we're pretty epic. You gotta admit. And our uh, bl blade liger ally there is actually has uh, some decent weapons on him. He has some missile launchers and he has the attack boosters uh, from the look of it, which I'll. I'll explain a little bit more about the attack boosters later when we actually get to use a Blade Liger in the tournament mode because you know I'm going to get one if it's my favorite zone in the game. And uh, he's also got boosters, so yeah, he, he's pretty much got all the best stuff he could have. I'm, I really wish I could have used that, but uh, I'm using the Liger Zero, which, uh, you know, I, I like the Liger Zero like everybody does. Even the uh, Liger Arrow is pretty good. But, uh, so we could probably win this boss with any of these three Zoids, but having all three of them at once is kind of ridiculous. But the Ultrasaurus is probably one of the one of the tougher bosses as far as, uh, its damage resistance goes. And, uh, but it's, it's, a uh, it's still pretty, uh, immobile, much like the, uh, the Deathsaur and the Seismosaurus. Uh, you can dodge its attacks, its attacks pretty easily. It's not like, uh, Mad Thunder or the, uh, Death Stinger where, uh, 
it can just sort of turn around and hit you at any time. But yeah, the uh, this this as well as the uh, the Death Sword have a major scaling problems with uh, from this between the anime. They used to be much much bigger in the anime, and we would be about as, as big as this thing's toe if it was properly scaled to the anime. But no big deal. We defeated it with Struck Laser Claw. Oh no, the Blade Liger died. I gave it all that hype and it just went over there and died, and yet the Liger arrow is still perfectly fine. What a shame. Oh well, we won. We beat the Empire campaign as well as all the other campaigns, which means we're finally done with this game and we can move on to the tournament mode, which is much more silly and much more uh, in control of the player. We can play it how we want to, by choosing our own characters and our own zoids. So I'll get around to recording that soon, and uh, that will be next time on Zoids Battle Legends. So another credit sequence here. Same credits as before, obviously, because it's the same game, but we get different Zoid because it's a different uh, final boss. And I believe it's still the wreckage of the Death Sower in the background. I don't think it's the Ultrasaurus or the Mad Thunder.